Hi there! This video takes you through the process of re-imaging your Cisco Secure Firewall 1200 series device from ASA to Threat Defense software. The prerequisites for re-imaging are displayed here. Connect your firewall device to a reliable power supply and power it on. If you need the device setup instructions, see the hardware installation guide linked in this video's description. Obtain a serial cable to connect your computer to the console port of the device. You can either use a USB drive or a remote server to copy the image to your firewall device. This video shows how to do this from a remote server using FTP. Obtain the IP address and the credentials required for FTP file transfer. Ensure that the remote server is reachable from the management interface of your firewall device. If you prefer to use a USB drive to copy the image, watch the video linked in the description. If your ASA device is smart licensed, deregister it before re-imaging. The re-imaging process can take about 30 minutes. Let's get started. Go to the Cisco software download page and download the threat defense image for your device model. For this demonstration, I am using a 1210 CP model. You can find the model number of your device on its label. After the download is complete, copy the image to the USB drive. Now connect your computer to the firewall device using a serial cable. Then connect the management port of your device with the network using an Ethernet cable. Let's now access the ASA CLI. If you're using a Windows computer, follow these steps. If you're a Mac user, proceed to the next chapter. In your computer, open Device Manager. Expand the Ports category to find the COM port that is assigned to your firewall device. Here, it is COM port 6. Next, open a terminal emulator such as PuTTY. Select Serial as the connection type and enter the COM port number in the Serial Line field. Leave the remaining settings as default and click Open. When you have access to the ASA CLI, proceed to the re-imaging task. If you're a Mac user, follow these steps to access the ASA CLI. Open the terminal app and move to the DV directory. Then run the list command to list all the USB ports. The commands being used are highlighted on your screen for easy reference. Identify the USB port assigned to your firewall device. Here, it is USB serial 2110. Next, run the screen command followed by the USB port to access the ASA CLI. When you have access to the ASA CLI, proceed to the re-imaging task. Next, let's assign a static IP address and a default route for the management interface. The management interface uses the default IP address 192.168.45.1. If your remote server is on the same network, you can skip this step. Run the Configure Terminal command to get into the Global Configuration mode. Then run the Interface Management command to start configuring the interface. First, assign a static IP address by running the IP address command followed by the IP address and the net mask. Then run the No Shutdown command. Next, run the Root Management command followed by the Gateway IP address to configure a default route. Run the Show Interface IP Brief command and verify the interface configuration. If you are completing the remaining steps at a later stage and want to save your configurations, run the Write Memory command. Now copy the image from the remote server to the flash memory of the firewall device using the copy command. In this video, I'm using FTP to copy the image. Press Enter to confirm the details. When prompted, enter the password. Copying the image can take few minutes. After the image is copied, proceed to boot the device using the Threat Defense image. To do this, first check if you have a boot system command already configured by running the Show Running Config Boot System command. If it's not configured, you will not see any result. If you find that this command is already configured, remove it by running the no boot system command. Now enter the boot system disk zero command followed by the threat defense image file name.
When prompted, press Enter to confirm and proceed. The installation starts and may take several minutes to complete. After the installation, the device reboots with the threat defense image. When you see the threat defense login prompt, log in using the default admin credentials. If you plan to do zero touch provisioning for your firewall device, disconnect without logging in. If you encounter any issues during this process, refer to the Cisco FXOS troubleshooting guide linked in this video's description. Thank you for watching this video. Please share your feedback and suggestions for our upcoming videos.